has knock-on effects. Um, and so that kind of leads us to AI art. And I'm not sure if you've had, if you've been following it or if you have any thoughts on it immediately as a topic. I mean, it's a very trendy topic and I, it I is, yeah. try to stay away from those <clears throat> by default. Well, what I'll um, hit you with is I feel like it relates directly to like my, my note here says AI art and the apocalypse, which sounds like a weird pairing, but it, it's directly related to this idea sophistication issue because it's saying like it's offloading a creative impulse, but also the technical knowledge and like the objective skill you had to learn in order to create the thing to some black box that even right now, as it is in its inception, nobody understands. Like we can't mm -hmm. know what all the code that's running is. We would have to reverse engineer it like it was something that we didn't have source access. Well, it's, it's not really code is the thing. Right, yeah. Like they, uh, even the code part of it is too messy and incomprehensible, but, <laughs> yeah. but actually the part that nobody really understands is, you know, the job of the code in this kind of system is actually to be data driven. And so like, you just have this massive amount of data that is like the neural network data mm -hmm. that's essentially controlling what's happening. And yeah, nobody really understands to any reasonable degree what is being caused to happen right by by virtue of this giant process and as this becomes more ubiquitous more democratized if we want to use that word it feels like well the immediate reaction seemed to be oh this is great because now anybody can make art and anybody can generate like fabulous paintings and you know people have hooked it up to a blender with a plug-in and now anybody can generate models and and it's like well yeah but no because they they're not generating it and if that software becomes dominant or even like significant adoption rate, like say 5% of, of the world that is creative is using this in some way, that's still a huge contingent of creatives that aren't actually engaging in creation directly. And so on the one hand, like you were saying about indie developers or small teams being capable, more capable now than they have been before and how that's like a good thing for those who choose to use it, I can see some idea of like, okay, maybe I could use this to lift the art burden. Cause that's the biggest art, the biggest burden that we have right now in the team that hasn't yet been resolved is we don't have like a good artist for modeling and stuff. And we're doing a lot of kit bashes and a lot of placeholders. And we mm -hmm. don't know what the path out would that for that would be besides like a painful, slow learning process. And we're willing to do that. And maybe the art AI art thing could help with that and make it faster. And that would be a benefit for us, but would it really? And that's sort of like the conundrum that I'm in, right? Is the other hand is, I'm not sure that it would be better for us to not ever learn the skills ourselves and rely on some black box that nobody understands. And what if that changes in some fundamental way? Or what if we can't ever reproduce something? Like say we want to make a, a similar version of something, but it's changed in the neural network side and now we can't reproduce what we got before. And like, you just don't have control. And that's yeah. the biggest concern that I would have with that whole subject, but also on a societal level, and this is a lot of course, but it's like, that's the least sophisticated somebody could be because like you're solving for all of the technological stuff and there's some sophistication in how you feed it a prompt, but that can be solved and maybe that can be AI generated. And like, there's there might be no end to how automated this whole process becomes. And if there's no human at any part, point of this system, then, like, how do you ever reproduce this? Or how do you ever learn something from this? Or how do you grow? And how do you have sophisticated ideas if they're all AI generated? And so I don't know how sophisticated this ends up sounding to you because you probably have a more firm grasp on the technological side of it. And maybe some of the stuff that I'm complaining, I'm thinking about and prophesizing can't come to pass like logistically, but it feels to me like this is a very dangerous ground to be treading. And it could, if we agree that knowledge lost is leading to a collapse of civilization, this feels like a really quick way to lose a lot of knowledge. Yeah, I mean, here's what, I'll just give you what I think about all these issues, which is, I will say in advance, is not really tied to any kind of definite conclusion. And the reason why is because, look, we're pretty early in whatever this thing is, and it's just very hard to predict things, especially when they're early, right? Um, one thing that is very obvious when you use some of these AI art systems is uh, that they don't really know what they're doing, right? It's like they'll make nonsense a lot of the time. So, you know, if you're just, if you're on Twitter or something and you're looking at these cool images that people generated, 
um, you're like, wow, this is amazing. But if you actually go try it, you know, a lot of the results are really not very amazing. And then once in a while you get something really cool and maybe you learn in this process, like how to give prompts that are uh, more likely to, to generate good images. But this also, the process of learning how to do this also gives you kind of some clue about what's actually going on, which is that, you know, sort of the more words that you put in your prompt that you're giving to the thing, the more you're like um, explicitly reminding it of certain classes of input data that it was trained on, right? And sort of bringing those into uh, consideration for the output. Whereas, you know, if you just say like, you know, cool picture of, of Mickey Mouse riding a surfboard or something, like you probably don't get something very good out of that, at least so far. I mean, who knows? This is also something people are working on. Um, now, the other thing you notice And again, this this is about the statement I'm about to make is about the current state of things and is certainly one of the things that AI people are are working on. Whether they will solve it, I don't I don't know, right? But there is definitely um, in these kind of generated images, there is a lack of coherency that happens um, unless it's a kind of a coherency that happens because like all the images it was trained on were coherent in a certain like way right so like if a lot of people learn to paint by like copying thomas kincaid paintings or something right and so that therefore you have a hundred thousand input images that all sort of do a certain thing um then it's pretty easy for one of these systems right now to like give you a, a different variation that that is like that. But um, what I mean by inconsistency is like, you know, if if this image is about the reflection of the moon in the water, like I don't know, like you prompted it with that in some way, like <clears throat> to what degree do all of the elements in the image support? or detract from that like ostensible point of the image right like the the way the brush strokes are are shaped if it's a painterly emulated thing right like the framing um the the composition of other elements in the scene right um the the thing that we end up seeing is like to the extent that these things end up coming out well in the output of of one of these queries it's because generically they come out well because like everybody on the internet who does all these images or whatever um or not just on the internet but like classically you know because i'm sure they scan all sorts of like media as input to this right but like to the extent that that people understand that the way you lay out this kind of scene is you do the composition in a certain way that can come back out in the output, but like you don't really see these things making decisions about composition, let's say. Like, like, you know, not at any level that we understand. Now again, maybe that sort of thing is emergently possible. Like I I never would say never about that kind of thing. Um, especially after the success of, you know, some of these earlier systems like AlphaGo and stuff, where they appear to be able to play quite coherently strategic games of go for example um although again those are different kinds of systems too <laughs> like those are you know uh reinforcement by by learning what happens when you play certain ways over an enormous number of games whereas you know these image synthesis kind of systems that we're talking about uh, I haven't played with any of the mesh synthesis ones. I assume they're like similar, but a little bit worse because, you know, meshes, like there are properties to meshes that you care about besides just how they look. Like if you're going to render them and use them to cast shadows with and all that stuff that are probably easier to mess up. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. You know, I'm I'm going to stop rambling and just say um it's early, but um I I definitely what I observe <clears throat> what I observe when I see outputs from this kind of thing is that they are they are matching the requirement in some kind of a way that is you know, is kind of shallow in terms of the meaning of what's in the image, right? It it doesn't, like if you had somebody sit down and try to make you a really high quality image that they really cared about, you would get something better if they were a good artist and tried hard and all these things. Um, but of course, you know, most people don't have the money to pay a good artist who tries hard. And in fact, maybe we don't even have that many of those anymore, um, paradoxically, even though it's easier than ever to be an artist and get training and all this stuff. So where is it going to end up? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, maybe I, so I, I could all, so, so the first thing though, I've just said something that amounts to, I'm not as impressed as some people are with the output of these things. I do want to make clear, technically it is super impressive, right? Um, like, you know, even five years ago, I would have had no reason to believe that you would be able to do what these systems are able to do now technically. So that's a huge advance. But that's different from, like, why do we look at images, right? And what are we getting from what we look at images? And what is the content of the image that we find make, that makes it worth looking at, right? And well, I, you know, I I don't I don't think it would be reasonable to expect that in the first year when we have these systems that are able to do this on a technical level, that they also somehow satisfy some more esoteric, deep meaning level of things. Like I, that's an unreasonable expectation. So I observe that they don't do that right now. Um, that doesn't mean that they won't eventually. Um, I don't know. Well, my so to allay my fears, basically AI would have to find some way to successfully achieve what we're talking about with that esoteric satisfaction. And I just feel like it probably won't ever, which maybe is fallacious, right? Maybe that will bear, bear, bear out as incorrect, but also- I don't know how to assign a probability to that. Like if right, I yeah, ask yeah, myself, yeah. I'm betting $100, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how to bet it. Well. The thing is, if they don't, I feel like even if they do satisfy that, it still is a problem. But if they don't, and we ex still accept the output, broadly speaking, then we lose the sophistication of whatever that esoteric stuff that people can't really put to words anyway is. Like we don't even experience it anymore. And I feel like that, to, to use a term that is probably, or a, a word, phrase that's probably gonna draw ire, we become less human if we don't have access to some way to interface with that aspect of life, of art. If art, if most of the art is going the trend of like Marvel movies and bad yeah. games and whatever else, like pulpy stuff that is not even really like good of its time, but it's, you know, you, you get the idea. If, if that's the direction things are heading and then like we don't even get whatever little shines through from one individual's effort on that team because now there's no yeah. individual, it's an AI. And that becomes a trend in general to use as, as parts. Like another example would be people, the average consumer forgets that when they play a game, it was somebody's job, which they were paid for and ostensibly cared about to assemble every pixel on the screen in some way or shape or form, right? People don't realize that that texture that's really bad and has low textile density relative to everything else was made by a human and placed there by a human, maybe not the same human, but they, it was all done that way. It, so games already kind of start to feel like they're generated amorphously and people offload that to like, oh, I guess like the company writ large didn't try here. So they like individuals are already sort of out of the picture for most people's understanding if they even think about that critically at all. And so if you get to the point where now it's not true that a human was responsible for assembling all of this stuff, then you can never, and you also take the the principle or the the idea that the the prediction that AI won't be able to satisfy this esoteric nature then we get to a point where you can't even have like one area of the game that looks like it, somebody really tried. It's all going to look like an AI because it already kind of does is sort of what I'm getting at. And maybe maybe that's not true. Maybe that's contentious that it already kind of does. But I feel like in most games I play, AAA games that are going for this realism uh, angle where they're trying to almost look like an ancestor simulation or look mm -hmm. like real life, they do so, but 
as soon as there's one thing that's not as good as everything else, it all falls apart. And it's going to be very attractive for game developers and publishers to use some sort of thing that will make the consistent, the, the, all the asset quality as consistent as possible. Cause that's hitherto been un like just never seen. Right. And so that's something that I do fear for games, but I also think that it extends to other mediums as well. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a flip side of this that actually might come out well. So I agree okay. with you. I agree with you that a lot of games look like they're AI generated, right? Yeah. Mm. Like I was watching the, you know, whatever the new mode for call of duty was that you know and it's yeah like it looks like call of duty fine whatever that means right, right? whatever call there's, of duty looks like there's very means. little surprise there in what you see on the screen i'll right. put it that way right um but part of the reason that happens so you know there are probably some higher level tools that are being used on these big teams. There's quite a few that are like procedural synthesis kind of tools. Very few of them we would classify yet as the kind of AI that you're talking about. But I, I would expect, it's reasonable to expect that those kind of tools will become much more pervasive in the future, right? But the thing that makes these games generic right now is not even really the use of these automated tools, although I'm sure it helps. It's just that you've got a very large team of people doing a thing and there's like not a lot of voice happening in terms of it, like an opinion of how things should look that's not generic, right? And and that's just the thing that naturally happens as teams get really big um, and as bu budgets go up, right? Because you could, you could have a creative director that's like, this next Call of Duty is going to be super crazy, man, and and like he'll get fired, right? Um, so, which again, paradoxically, may be part of what's killing this series over time, right? I mean, it still is one of the most successful franchises, but like it's going to die eventually. Um, and actually, I don't know if it's still one of the most successful. Right? It's hard hard to say. It also depends on what you're willing to compare the numbers to, like what other kinds of games. But um, so so the flip side of it that might actually be good, but I don't really, I, again, I don't know what probability to ascribe to what I'm about to say, right? But like, okay, if an AI tool lets you do a lot more, and if you have enough control over the output as the person, you know, there's enough dials or there's enough flexibility in the prompts and there's enough reproducibility like you're talking about because that is important, right? If you are, as the person prompting the generation system, if you have enough control to have expressivity in a reasonable way over what gets generated, and maybe sometimes that just means we generate 50 things and you pick the one that's closest to what you want. Like that's one way of doing this. but <clears throat> that can enable games to be made with by fewer people, which has been the trajectory. Like over the entire history of games, it's been smaller teams have been able to do more. It's just that we counterbalance that by making them huger than ever before, right? And so <clears throat> we keep expanding out as the capabilities keep expanding. Um, but like if a smaller team can make what today it takes a team five times the size to make, which is not an unreasonable expectation, that just means you get back more flexibility for individuals to have a say in what's in the thing, right? It's no longer like the bank gets to say what the game is. It's like the team gets to say what the game is. And that's one step closer, right? Now, maybe, the dude, at the same time, the reason I don't know how much of a probability to assign to this is like i just got a fucking android phone a few weeks ago that seemed cool it like folds out and has a super big screen and that's nice i cannot type text messages on this phone because the autocorrect is so overzealous it like changes entire sentences for like one character typos and there's no mode to put into it that's like fix only the one character typos right and so i just have autocorrect turned completely off and it's the most frustrating experience it's like 
why is this so bad, right? So we seem to be, even with simple stuff like that, we seem to be terrible at designing it. Um, so like, why do I think we can design these more complicated systems to be more amenable to expressivity, right? It's um, like, again, to go rant about spell check, because I use iOS spell check as well for years. Like, it's so pompous, it doesn't even give you a thing that says, undo this thing I just changed. It's like literally just changes it and says, fuck you. If you don't like that, delete the last three words you typed and type them again. And then it fucking changes it again. Like you have to do it three times sometimes. It's like we're so bad at simple like characters in a row. Like why do I think that we're going to be better at, you know, generating meshes for a 3D game? I don't know. But we'll see.